Congress. Our topic, armed and mentally ill, and what our lawmakers are going to keep guns away from those who have serious mental health issues. As we noted in our earlier discussion, Senator John Cornyn, the second highest ranking Republican, proposing a bill that would curb gun ownership. It would also increase the information the federal government has about some of its citizens. Whether his approach has merit or any chance of becoming law is open for debate. So let's get to it. Joining me now is John Lott. He is the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. He's also the author of More Guns, Less Crime, Understanding Crime and Gun Control Laws. And from San Francisco, Robin Thomas. She is the executive director of the Center to Prevent Gun Violence. Mr. Lott, I want to start with you. The title of your book seems to say it all, More Guns, Less Crime. Do you believe that the solution is more guns? And if what if those guns wind up in the hands of the mentally ill? Look, we all want to keep people who are dangerous from being able to get guns. The problem overall, though, is that police, are, while they're extremely important, aren't going to be there all the time to protect people. They almost always arrive after the crimes occur. And the question is, what should people do when they're having to confront a criminal by themselves? And simply telling people to behave passively is not very good advice. Look, you if know, I could push um, back on that just for a just second. just had the congresswoman on. Yeah, if I could just push back. For 30 years, the NRA what? has been saying that guns don't kill people. But a lot of people are dying because of guns. So if that's not I, the case, I've never said guns, that. But you say more people should have guns. Well, I, I, look, guns make it easier to kill people. But they also make it easier to protect people and pre prevent bad things from happening. And the question is, what's the net effect? I'll just give you a simple example. Every place in the world that's banned guns has seen an increase in murder rates. Every single place. It's just not Washington, D.C., and Chicago in the United States. But even island nations that have banned guns have seen big increases in murder rates afterwards. You think out of randomness, one time when guns were banned, one time you'd see murder rates go down. So but what, that hasn't happened. What then is the solution, in your opinion? And will Senator Cornyn well, I mean, address this? You talk about mass public shootings in the previous segment that's there. I mean, one thing you have to acknowledge is that, with just two exceptions, since at least 1950, every single one of those mass public shootings have taken place where general Americans aren't allowed to have guns for protection. All the cases that you just mentioned, whether it be Charleston or whether it be, you know, rural Colorado or the Lafayette movie theater or on and on, are cases where guns were banned, where they were gun-free zones. These killers seek out places where victims aren't able to defend themselves. But, and they but again, you're, do it. But again you're you, defining the problem. What, in your opinion, is the solution? And does the Cornyn bill move us closer to a solution as opposed uh, okay. to simply reinstating what the problem is? Well, well, the solution that I was getting to was that gun-free zones are a big problem. But, look, I, I have to say a couple things on what you just had in the previous segment. People are moved. We're horrified. Everybody is by these attacks. Something needs to be done. But what nobody you're not talking about, others aren't talking about, is getting rid of these gun-free zones. You have small areas in different states where people aren't allowed to defend themselves, and yet those are the tiny areas that these killers keep on picking out time after time after time to have these attacks. Now, with regard to uh, the Cornyn bill, uh, you know, people have to realize that the background check system is a complete mess. When the president says that there are 2.3 may, 2 million prohibited people that have been prevented from buying guns because of background checks, that's simply flat out false. What the correct terminology is, is that there have been 2.3 million denials. And virtually all those denials, over 99% of those, are false positives. So let me give you an example. No, I, I, the late Senator Ted Kennedy, when he was denied for flying five times on the no-fly list, would you count that as five times we stopped a terrorist from flying? No. He simply had a name similar to somebody that they wanted to stop. And, and that's what happens to those 2.3 million so people. So I think I would be safe in saying that your position is that the gun-free zones should be done away with and there should be more guns. John Lott, president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. Mr. Lott, thank you for your time. I want to turn now to Robin Thomas. She is the executive director of the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. Ms. Thomas, for 30 years, as I mentioned to Mr. Lott, the NRA has, NRA has been saying that guns don't kill people, 
But as I pointed out, a lot of people are dying because of guns. So if it's not the guns, what's doing all the damage? And are you convinced 